Alright, 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 what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Florencio Files where me, a grandmaster in all three races, professional commentator, expert gamer, and expert of StarCraft, watches a man that takes my expertise, puts it in the garbage bin, and makes me look like Jon Snow because I know absolutely nothing when I'm commentating this man in the top right. It is of course Florencio, known as the Sewer Mermaid by his fans for being a kind of mixture of filthy and beautiful at the same time. Mermaids, of course, the uh, erotic uh, beast of fixation of sailors for many thousands of years. And uh, yeah, he's the erotic beast of fixation of lonely StarCraft players. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyways, Shadow is in the top left as Zerg victim in this game. And uh, he's playing on his Elden Lord account. I do know he was playing a fair bit of... Uh, ooh, he's stacking his probes. Nice. I like it. He was playing a fair bit of Elden Ring for a while there, Florencio, which I, I find... I really need to go look up some of those VODs because I am sure he has a very unique approach to playing that game. Yeah, you know, that's a game that's about repetition. It's about memorizing exactly how to read your opponent's plays and how to counter them. And there is a fair bit of creativity in kind of builds and play styles, but you still think of it as a rather mechanical game, a game where you've kind of got to have a certain amount of speed and inputs and all this sort of stuff. So I am absolutely fascinated to watch it for those who don't know he's also been streaming nightmare mode a fair bit uh over the last month or two as well and that has been bizarre to watch oh look at this oh look at this he splits the probes oh oh the pylon gets spotted oh no shadow playing safe here this is a big problem anyways we'll talk about his nightmare mode escapades where he took i think 50 tries to finish like the third mission um, and he was trying to like fly command centers around and drop SCVs. It was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. <laughs> oh no, he's getting surrounded. Okay, Shadow's on top of it, man. There is a cannon on the low ground though. Shadow needs to get down there right now. I think there's plenty of surface area. If he gets a few drones on the left and on the right, he can kill that cannon. But he's attacking the pylon, not the cannon. Hello, Shadow. Shadow. Eight Zerglings are building, but oh, he's going to get two cannons up on the high ground. Shadow tunnel visioning right now and only attacking one thing at a time. Oh, defending cannon rushes is always about multitasking. You know what, though? Actually, this is fine because these cannons don't reach anything. So he can just go back to mine and then get like a, ra a single Ravager to slowly break out. Oh, he's actually going to commit. You know what? If he gets those drones out of the way, he can depower it. But the drones are blocking the Zerglings. Zerglings do way more damage. He's got to focus that pylon. He has to focus that pylon on the right side. Depowering the cannons is how you defend this. Oh no! The drone's blocking the higher DPS Zerglings. He finally depowers it. He's going to get that third pylon as well, but it will power the cannons momentarily. He's pulling drones back. You can't do that, mate. Oh no! Okay, the queen should be able to deal with it, though. It can outrange this. He's going to build a spine crawler as well. Shadow is actually miles ahead if they stay calm here. But staying calm in the face of a Florencio cannon rush, something that's easier said than done. Meanwhile, the Sewer Mermaid says, you know what, let's build a Nexus, a Cannon, and a Cybercore. Go for Double Gas behind it and begin the transition. Okay, you know what? I think Shadow is actually miles ahead if they stay calm. They are building six more things, though. They definitely need nothing but drones and to build economy here. Florencio technically has a two-worker advantage. And there we go. It is held for now. Link speed starts. Three overlords building. Overall, I'm really impressed with Shadow's ability to simply keep doing things. A lot of people freeze up under the panic, and while Shadow does look a little panicky, overall, Injects are going down, Lings are clearing up the cannons, and as soon as Shadow starts droning, he's going to take a massive lead, because this Nexus is so far behind Florence, you're only now building a second pylon, you're kidding me! He has been massively supply blocked. He's going to start his second layer of defense in the main. For those who aren't familiar with Florencio, it's all about building layers. So he's got his front layer, which is almost a bait. If you break through, normally you've killed the Protoss player, but he will have a second layer of defense in the main where he's not just building double Stargate. Stargate and Robo, this is old school. Super old school, wow. Is he, he I mean, against Terran, he likes Colossus, like a mixture of Colossus Tempest. Tempest outrange everything, and then the, the kind of, um, the Colossus clean up the Marines, but I don't know what he's doing with a Robo against Zerg. Shadow right now droning up these expansions. Two bases full of workers. Florencio's only got a couple workers on his expansion, so he's definitely on the back foot. And what do we see first out of the site? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go for the alpha of Chad's. First Chad Ray does start up, gets chrono boosted. The Robo, I'm perhaps a little bit more fascinated to see. Oh my god, look at this Zergling scouting. Shadow knows who he's playing against. Oh, I think Shadow knows who Florencio is, guys. I think they see the Dankcraft clan logo. 
and the Cannon Rush, and they've said, you know what? You are the sort of people who take friggin' hidden bases. So I'm gonna go scout for it. Now, I think that's a misclick. Yeah, I think he accidentally put a drone on his army key here. Something like that. Now, funny thing, guys. <laughs> There's still seven drones on hotkey number two for defending. What's the bet? At some point, Shadow panics and A moves Control Group 1 and Control Group 2 into a fight and all these drones come out of the main. I did this just the other day after defending a cannon rush in the early game and I pulled like 20 workers to the other side of the map and I was so annoyed. I, I was super tilted. Uh, people who watch my stream a lot would know the moment where I'm constantly swearing and kind of shouting at myself and, you know, just having some of that nice, calm self-talk. Idiot! Freaking idiot! Fucking... Why are you so stupid, man? You, you guys know when like I, I look like my my whole soul's about to melt down. It's like I've, I've lost all self-value. I Basically, I chuck an artosis. What can I say? Uh, Robo Bay's on the way, so it does look like Disruptors or Colossus will be the play. The second Void Rate coming out now as well. And just an Observer so far. Does give him a lot of information, which is cool. Gold Base is very exposed on this map. There's only three Queens out. They could defend one or two Void Rays with Creep, but remember, they can't transfuse off Creep, so they've got to be careful. If I was Shadow, I'd probably just be focusing on rebuilding. Nine Overlords building at once? Okay, Shadow's just going to build a new third up here. So Shadow's just going to take a cancel on this, most likely, would be the best play. I wouldn't venture so far off Creep. Cancel, 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 cancel! Ah, I could have got a 225 mineral refund, but it is what it is. Looks like, yeah, you could see Shadow selected it there just a little bit too late. And the Elden Lord actually taking a third base. This is cool, man. Hydras are going to come out. Okay, so Florencio used to go Void Rays, Force, Hydras, and then go Mass Oracle. Is his modern thing I play, he playing Colossus to counter the Hydras? The problem with going Colossus Void Ray is it's hard countered by Corruptors. He's going to make two Stalkers? And wait, he made Warp Gate. He only makes Warp Gate to hide unit tech switches normally. He's going to go Stalker Disruptor. Oh, this is going to be bizarre. Cannons and batteries building at the front. There is a new Overlord here. Voidray was pulling back for a second, but it's going back to the front of the map now. Florencio with a Zealot on the tower, two Voidrays on the front. Queens should be able to defend this now. 1-1 one, one upgrades and 10 Roaches building for Shadow. Shadow's work account has kind of arrested itself. It's kind of funny how Florencio, with a cannon rush in the early game, manages to get his opponents to panic so hard. Because it looked like Shadow could have been at 60 or 70 workers by now, right? Five, six Queens. Obviously, I'm talking pro gamer stuff, but even if you scale that down to Diamond League, it's like, you know, 50 workers or so easily, but only on 39. And the weird Void Ray harassment, the cancelling of the gold, seems to have really frozen Shadow up. So Shadow's actually way undersaturated on the natural now, and is very occupied with this Void Ray Stalker pressure, which is pretty non committal for Flo. That being said, Flo's not macroing behind it either. You know, whenever you look at a Flo game, you think, well, surely he's getting ahead while harassing. No. And he's making more unupgraded Stalkers, which is absolutely bizarre. Oh, he has an opening in his wall. I thought his base was fully walled. That's why I was kind of confused how the Stalkers got out. Does clean up this Overlord on the high ground. We've got high drop grades coming in for Shadow. No economy lead for Shadow. And that's dangerous against a man who... I mean, i got to tell you guys, there are people out there who have specialties. Florencio, I mean, this man is a master of ball fondling. He will tickle you in places you didn't know you could be tickled. He'll find that little hairless patch on the underside of your uh, your 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 uh, your roach hydra, and he'll tickle him right there, and he'll go ooh, and they'll start giggling helplessly before they do get absolutely exploded by the what's it called? It's called like a purification nova, which is a very Protoss way of saying I'm gonna friggin' rip your face off. I'm gonna purify you know. It's very it's very kind of Warhammer. They're like you know oh we must purify the Xenos. It's like I don't know if it's purifying. I think you're melting their goddamn face off. Like they think you. Just doing a bit of genocide, mate. That's just call it what it is. You don't, you know, you don't need to mince your words here, mate. Now, he's going Mass Roach Ravager against a guy who's been building flying units. And he's kind of struggling to deal with them. That's a bit odd. The Mass Ravager especially is funny because they can be amazing. But they're kind of a, a micro-intensive unit. They're almost even a spellcaster. Now, he just revealed he has an Observer by sniping that Creep Tumor. Still no Overseer Morph for Shadow, though. Shadow just chilling. Stalker Disruptor. Second Stargate coming in? What is the second Stargate for? Oh, he, he, he walks a Disruptor forward, shoots the Queens, and then just runs away. Florencio going bowling. This is actually hilarious. I always say that a Disruptor from a surprising angle is the most powerful thing in the world, right? And that makes sense, right? Because if you think about it, any of your buddies have ever tried to teabag you. If they just walk up to you like, hey, Mike, and then they pull their pants down, 
you already know what's coming. There's no way you're letting that hit you in the face. But it's when you're looking the other way, you're watching your screen at a land, you're sitting there playing and you turn and there's like a, you know, you're getting turkey slapped a little bit and you're like, ah, oh, you got me. Uh, you know, it's it's got to be a surprise move. And I think that's why Florencio was kind of moving that random disruptor in. So if he can kind of occupy the, the, the Zerg from one side, come in from the other side and just drop that surprise turkey slap on him could be pretty fantastic. He said, oh my God, he's setting up traps as well. Okay, so he's going to do layers of stasis traps. He's got tempests to shoot them from afar and kind of lure them in. And then he's going to drop balls on them and freeze them with stasis traps if they come into it. This is so dirty. I love that he doesn't even have... He's got a control group for his disruptors, funnily enough. Oh, big first disruptor shot. Oh my God, oh my God. Second, second huge disruptor shot. Oh my God. Absolutely massive disruptor shots. The Zerg there showing some exceptional micro. That's what we call clumping up. Remember, guys, if you ever see artillery fire coming your way, clump together, all get inside the same foxhole. It'll work out. It's a good idea. Florencio continuing to look to bait his opponent into some of those big ball shots. Does throw that one from a bit far away. Doesn't even quite get the creep tumor. He's only lost a few stalkers and one disruptor so far. Another disruptor shot goes out. Oh, misses that one. But just waiting for his balls to refill. He'll back off to the stasis trap. The lings will get frozen. The Roach Hydra, though, is behind it. He yeah, moves his army. The Disruptor's pulling back. Disruptor deep in the red, but oh my god, the third Disruptor comes forward and lands a massive Disruptor. Files landing on the Elden Lord. Shadow still has 68 workers and a lot of Roach Hydra production. If Shadow can just spread the army out or come from two sides, this is a really easy crushing fight. So the question is, does Shadow know about spreading units out or kind of coming from two sides? Right now, there's 16 drones and a pack of Hydras on Control Group 2. Uh-oh, those drones are 100% coming into the next battle, aren't they? That disruptor got focused down. Oh my god, he focuses down two disruptors. He focused down all three. Shadow playing the Clem maneuver. If that is not a ladder hero, then I don't know one. Like I said, all you need to do is spread your units out, come in from multiple sides, and you can attack move. But Shadow said, uh, I've watched Clem play StarCraft. I I've watched Maru play StarCraft. You're meant to run forward and click on the disruptors and, and judge the engagement perfectly. And I can totally do that because I'm basically a pro player. Uh, classic ladder delusion there, guys. Your average Joe trying to uh, play like he's Messi. Always good. It's like, yeah, I can basically dribble like Messi. So that's within my skill set. And I'm like, I don't know if it is. It's a great thing about video games. You get a lot more delusion than in the real world. Then again, there's a lot of guys out there who've done like one karate class and they're like, my fists are insured as a deadly weapon or <laughs> registered as a deadly weapon if I kill someone I'm going to prison right you know then again may maybe that delusion is just humanity I mean, maybe it's not that specific to video games is it second robo is coming up in the main so he's gonna get a few he's got a colossus coming no viagra for the colossus though he likes to make his boys work for their uh, their games it's a lot of tempests this whole lot like if, if you come in with enough corruptors to counter the colossus tempest it's not that much on the ground. It's it's a pack of unupgraded stalkers. No blink, no forge upgrades. You've got 2-2 two, two Roach Hydra. I mean, as long as you don't clump up... thing is, Shadow, Shadow really has not shown an understanding of how to split units up, have they? That's that's kind of the problem, right? They, their only micro they've shown is run forward and click on things. And this is actually like... As an Australian, I'm the king of hands-off micro, man. I play with all sorts of different lag. Every game, it's a different server. I don't know what ping I'm going to get. So for me, I'm a master. And Zerg players as well are masters of this. We're masters of learning how to fucking spread shit out and then go, oh, it's time to fight. F2, attack, move. But we'll see if Shadow can figure that one out. Florencio's got a second Colossal. He's going more Oracles. I like the Oracles. The Stasis Traps are actually legitimately really good with this sort of style. I was playing a Disruptor Tempest uh, Mass Stasis Trap style against Terran as a bit of like a troll kind of meme build a while ago, and it actually resulted in some hilariously fun games. That was before everyone was building Ravens every game. Nowadays, the Stasis Traps don't do very well unless you can snipe the Raven Stasis Trap doing great. Disruptors on the south, not quite reaching the center of this army on the north, but those force fields plus the Colossus. Man, so many spellcaster usage here from Florencio. His army is so complicated. He actually takes an awesome fight. He's like 3,000 resources ahead in the units lost right now. Dude, what? Oh, if he throws a disruptor right now. Right now. Right now, throw a disruptor. Oh, I mean, he's got so many in Machami. He doesn't even need to. Fair enough. It just looks really cool when you time out a disruptor shot to like explode just like a fraction of a second after the stasis trap breaks. Easier said than done, but definitely a good move. 24 corruptors on the way. That's what I'm talking about, man. If he can just take out the Colossus Tempest Mama with the corruptors, 
it's just going to be about Roach Hydra, Zergling kind of like spreading out and, and not getting the biggest disruptor hits in the world on them. That being said, there are 30 Stalkers and two Disruptors and four Sentries. So I feel like Shadow's kind of going to need to remax here or maybe go in with the Corruptors first, then come in with the Ground Army. You can't be waiting. Oh my god, Flo's going to recall in the main. He's looking for a recall in the main, but it's not going to work. Corruptors find it. Oh no. Flo's mama gets caught out. She gets shot right down. Doesn't even lose a Corruptor for that. Oh, oh, he's going with the Ground Army first. Oh my god, the Disruptor's in the front. Oh no, Flo. One of his Disruptors goes down. The other one, oh, it gets a decent Disruptor shot on that side. But man, these, these Corruptors are killing it. These Corruptors are slaying. The Roach Hydra is not quite enough, I think, to win the entire ground fight. But with the Remax, that's going to be easy. And there's 22 Corruptors up right now. Especially if Shadow makes a uh, Greatest Buyer. Shadow can then morph the rest into Broodlords. And look at the upgrades. The 2-2 two, two Hydras are wrecking. Disruptor shot does get four Hydras. That was pretty slick, but... Still three Hydras plus Lynx coming in from behind. And these Stalkers are getting ravaged. Flo with a really cute style. But he doesn't know what to do now. Florencio's making Immortals, which, I mean, they're not a bad unit. They're good versus the Roaches, I guess. But against the Hydras and the Lynx, they aren't ideal. And because he doesn't have any upgrades, it's going to be really hard. Like, maybe, I would say, like, Psy Storm Disruptors with the Immortals would be good. Because Immortals are so tanky of a front line. He does have a fourth base up, which is nice. But he's got to transfer workers. His main's fully mined out. Natural's transferring workers now as well. So he will start taking the fourth mining. Shadow hasn't really transferred to his fourth either. This is uh, one of these things where you can see these players in this intense moments in the game. Do They start building drones for the new bases rather than transferring them, which is a common thing. Florencio doing the same thing. He's rallied his probes here to a random spot. on. Wait, are all of his next site rallied to different spots okay no three of them are on a control group he just doesn't control group the fourth one. Oh, florencio getting a taste of his own his own caustic medicine there the taste of ammonia hitting the back of his throat his opponent pisses all over his nexus and florencio i mean he's a master of the sewers let's see if he can wriggle his way out of here because he's pretty screwed these stalkers don't have anything he doesn't even have recall remember he recalled some stalkers out of the previous fight oh god he's in he's in a bad spot he's getting surrounded by zerglings the hydra's doing pretty well that being said there's not that much ground Shadow is, is not got any lava. Shadow's got no lava. Oh my god, if Shadow just fights with the Hydras and the drones, they can win this fight. But they're building roaches, which are terrible against the Immortals. Great fight there. Corruptors come in, though, for round two of the P. But, oh no, it was off cooldown. He's getting all of his Corruptors taken out by the Stalkers and the Cannons. Nice slow Stalker warp in there for Florencia. But it is what it is. Roach Hydra coming in. He's going to try and focus the Immortals. I think he should just probably A move, take out whatever he can, kill the Stalkers. The 2-2 the two -two upgrades. 3-2 now are so powerful, man. The powerful upgrades. Oh, Florencio's aversion to upgrades right now. We're watching basically Zerg units on steroids. And Florencio won't even touch protein powder. Like, let alone creatine. He's like, no, no, no. I'm clean. I, I am a clean StarCraft player. I don't need any of your, your things to help boost your performance. That's friggin' cheating, mate. Oh, Flo's mining sucks now. How is the Zerg's mining worse? Doesn't the Zerg have these two bases up? Oh, he hasn't transferred yet. That base is just coming out. He's transferring down here. Once this base gets up, Zerg's mining will be so much better. Zerg is realizing that he has so many idle workers. I don't think he's found the, the, the idle worker button. The control click the idle worker button. There's an idle worker button here when you're playing the game. You control click that bad boy. Selects all idle workers or control F1 is the default. And then you just click them on one of these new bases. Either way, that income, look at that. That's shooting up. And I think Flo's kind of at the end of his tether. He's making a few more balls, which is good. Balls are fantastic. But... As efficient as they were at the start of the game, he's now down 5,000 resources in the units. Lost 3 2 upgrade, Roach Hydra, Vipers coming in, melee, carapace, and a Veinling Nest. I mean, Shadow may be building a bit more stuff than he needs to, but yeah. Still no greatest buy. That's what's crazy to me. Having, having 20 plus corruptors, that's 44 supply of units that can't attack ground. That's where you can lose this game. So you can look at the army supply and be like, oh, it's so bad. Take 44 supply off that. It's, it's a small army advantage. Well, 21 Hydras are queuing up. Okay, it's back to being a gigantic army advantage. <laughs> Florencio starts Blink at the 19-minute mark. He's like, you know what I need right now? Blink. <laughs> Just wait for his Blink micro, guys. There's two types of Florencio micro. You never know which one you're going to get. It's either grab his whole army and just blink into the worst position ever and lose them all, or it's legitimately quite good blinking back of weak units. And you're like, what? He can do this? You just don't know what you're going to get. You could get like really cool, like quite good 
blink micro or just the dumbest stuff you've ever seen and uh yeah it's it's I, I feel like it does break his opponent's will a bit when they realize they're in a close game with a guy who just blinks his stalkers into like ultras or something like that um either way without forge upgrades the longer this game goes the harder it does get for flow i think a mass void ray swap definitely not a good idea there's viper hydra out even though it'd be the corruptors carriers would be countered by the corruptors so airs airs off the 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 out of the out of the you know it's it's not really a decision you can make here archons would be way better than stalkers stalkers are a pretty bad unit in terms of cost for cost for late game especially when you don't upgrade them so if florencio wins this game i'm gonna have to give him some new title i don't know what what's the highest title in mermaid offices guys like you know if you're in the mermaid military or in their their civil society their government you know we have a prime minister here in Australia. Americans have a president. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. The the grand clam holder, the clam, the clam master. I don't. <laughs> and then if you're a sewer mermaid, it's a little bit different as well. The changeling's getting spotted there and cleaned up by Flo. Good job. He's still massing stalkers. To be fair though, he's got a ton of storm and disruptors. Hydras are going to get wrecked by this. You need if you got ultras, you can clean this up because there's only two immortals. If and that's an easy army to use. Banelings could help if because they can clear the High Templar. Broodlords would be amazing. Still no Great Aspire. Oh, man. You're in late game, Shadow. Shadow, you gotta... Oh, my God. Shadow's had such a good army advantage for so long. But... Okay, the Corruptors are gonna go, go pee. Oh, the DT's coming in. Is that just gonna be a big DT run by? I think so. He's gonna go for a run by maybe on the north of the map. Oh, he's gonna spot the Corruptors as well. Check this out. We're on Florencio's camera right now, guys. Watching the blitzing speed of this man as he actually control groups his uh, High Templar and his Disruptors on different keys. I think he's going to go up and try and catch those Corruptors. They're not being watched. So he's going to try and probably move underneath and then drop storms and, and kill a bunch of them. Which is actually a really clever move. DT is running into that base as well, especially if his opponent's distracted. Oh, the Corruptors are running in though. Here we go. He kills the entire mineral line up here almost instantly. Florencio making this game messy right now. And nice recall. It's going to save most of those DTs. Unfortunately, that main base... Oh, the Corruptors could probably tank that. They still see more Stalkers warping in. No Lurker Den. No Lurker Den, no Broodlord, no Ultra. Those are your three top-tier units for Zerg. We've got the tech. We've got the tech. At least Mike, make Kite is plating, mate. Make plus two melee. 18 drones! Shadow has 10,000 resources in the bank. They decided to make 18 drones. I mean, they better stack a lot of injects, which they are doing. They've got 34 lava. So to be fair, they can remax. But man, that's a pretty scary army from Flo just due to the splash damage. He's out of these Archons in. Oh, he's going to catch all the Vipers. Oh, no. Shadow actually has a few control groups here. But remember, the ground army is nowhere near as big. Nice blinding clouds. That was cute. Cute micro. But I mean, does Shadow really? It's a lot of splash damage, man. Oh, my God. The blinding clouds are sick, but the storms are even better. Yeah, you can't stand and fight with those storms, mate. Oh my god, get out of here, Shadow. Get out of here. Roaches? Roaches aren't going to cut it? Oh no, Corruptor's coming in. Actually, is freaking dodging the storms not badly. Shadow's actually playing this pretty well, man. Oh, Florencio's killing the Corruptors, though. Throwing the Corruptors away. Yeah, it clears up supply. But imagine if you just morph those into Broodlords. This would be a free win. Zerglings! Why are we making lings against Storm and Archons? Oh my god, make Ultras, mate. Oh no. Okay, I mean, Shadow's done a good job of dodging the storm so far, but there's still, like, a, a disruptor shot comes out. Only gets a Hydra or two. There's still a few storms in that big storm on the Hydras. Oh, my gosh. Another storm on the top doesn't really hit anything. The Lings are trickling in, but there's still Archons and storms. Oh, man, these Lings are getting slaughtered. Florencio's Blink Micro, by the way, is amazing. I don't think I've seen him use it once. To be fair, he's managing dual spellcasters. I would not bother blinking here either. That's actually a good play, as much as I said it like I'm making fun of him. Um, <laughs> it's actually good prioritization. Is blinking's not as important as dropping splash damage correctly. Drones are going down in this base. Only five Hydras building. There's We're still building Hydras into Storm. Oh, no. Shadow. Shadow's a lair tech master, but... If you're going to be a lair tech master, you need to go kill your opponent on lair tech. If Shadow, when they were first maxed out, split their army, attacked with half here, half up here, they win They win this game. There's no way Flo could defend both angles. And they could just keep remaxing on Roach Hydra. But if you let your opponent max out on Storm, Disruptor, Archon, even though the core of the army was unupgraded Stalkers, that splash damage is just so good. You don't have Lurkers, Broodlords, or Ultras. Ultras the easiest to use, the weakest of the units. Lurkers or Broodlords are the best options, of course. Roach Hydra does manage to get a Disruptor there, but he took a big Disruptor shot before that. Good focus fire, man. Shadow, Shadow really is microing like a Terran player. Like, everything is move in, move out, focus fire. 
This is like a Terran player playing Zerg for sure. Oh my god, and the upgrades are going to do it. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Dude, Shadow's got it. The power of upgrades. Upgrades and Terran tryhard style micro. That's it. That's GG. These High Templar are going to recall. Flo does have the purple gas gold base up. He could transfer like a billion workers and fully saturate it. But I mean, what's he going to do? He's just making more stalkers. 15 drones get rebuilt for Shadow. Shadow, assuming Shadow just retakes this base on the top, you know, takes the base on the bottom. I mean, Shadow's just just got the, the units that are doing okay now. There's still eight Corruptors out, 11 Hydras. We're still not thinking about Priests. <laughs> this is so wild to me, man. It's always so wild to me that there's guys who are just like, I only build layer tech units, and I'm like, oh, okay, you kind of play an all-in game, right? They're like, no, I sit in my corner of the map, expand and defend, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've been watching a little bit of... I've been thinking about replaying uh, some, some Civ Six campaigns. I was watching a, a video of a guy doing a, a run-through, a really fun run-through of that, and I'm like... This is like when you're like, you, you, you make a giant army just when you get like a tech of like, we just got to musket musket guys, let's make a ton of them. And then you just don't declare war on everyone. Anyone, you sit there paying upkeep on that army and you're like, yeah, now we're just going to tech up and go to the next stage and stuff. And you're like, um, okay. <laughs> Why are we investing in a, in a massive army right now if we're not going to use it? Oh, no, just like guys with guns standing around. Nice run by though. Shadow, as much as I'm making fun of him, is actually kicking Florencio's a butt with their upgrades and their multiprong. They've got plus two and adrenal glands. And that was Florencio's most important base. He's got a new one up top. He does save some of his probes. He's lost 20 probes. 40 drones have gone down for Shadow. Uh, Shadow's kind of wrecking him right now. Uh, does need to transfer workers around. But other than that, as long as they make a good army, which they still... This is the problem with them winning that previous fight. They've decided Mass Hydra is actually a good idea. And we're building... More Corruptors! You've already got eight. Why are you making more Corruptors? Are you drunk, mate? You need Corruptor Viper to deal with Mass Zealot Storm. Oh my lord. You know, this is that thing, right? A lot of people always want to know the unit counters, and I always say, hey, get your fundamentals down first. I think Shadow actually has pretty good fundamentals. They're at that point of the game where it's time to learn unit counters. <laughs> You've worked very hard on the fundamentals. It's time to figure out... A oh, not really even unit counters, more just a late game comp. Oh, this is a good fight for Flo, though. Because he's got he's got 3-3. Three, three. It's the storm that's the problem. It's the storm that's the problem. Oh, my God. But he kills the High Templar so fast. He does eat crazy storms. He kills all the High Templar except one. Moving into storms like that, a crazy move. I mean, his upgrades were kind of sick, though. So it, it, it doesn't even matter. Dude, we are watching a man eat splash damage worse than anyone. Like, terrible engagements from Shadow. Always microing in a clump rather than just spreading out before a fight. But Florencio's refusal to make upgrades mean they're both playing on the same level. We've got one guy missing a leg, one guy missing an arm. It is the most bizarre fight we've ever seen, but it's friggin' entertaining. <laughs> You're like, he's hopping around, what can he do? But when he, once he gets both hands on the other guy, and he can kind of lean on him and stuff, like, he's actually pretty powerful. But then the other guy has way better footwork and stuff, but he's only got one arm to strike with. He can do some kicks as well, I guess, and some knees, because he's got both legs, but... It's a bizarre kind of match where you're like, wait, who even wins? Let me know in the comments who would win. Because now I'm, as a bit of an MMA fan, I am very curious right now. I think both legs should give you an advantage. I think with both legs, you've got enough balance. Like, they shouldn't be able to take you down. Actually, no, because then once they, if they get both arms on you... Oh, man, now this is really interesting. Let me know. I, um... I, this might be a question to ask anyone out there who's uh, trained any any fighting or anything. I'm very curious. Let's let let me know. Let me know, gang. Uh, even if you're not qualified, let us know anyway. Lings. Oh, they're getting minced by zealots. What's the army right now? Wait, why are we still building lings? Okay, hydras are coming in now. Those lings are getting slaughtered. The cannons defending really well. Uh oh, the hydras are popping out with the zealots and the DTs on top of them. Oh god, he needs to collect these units. The overseer's not up top right now. The overseers are down here. Okay, there we go. Does get on top. He's going to defend this base, but so many drones going down. 74 drones. The base on the bottom's going to go down as well. Florencio actually getting a ton of damage here. I mean, Shadow lost the top base and the far bottom base. Florencio should be completely dead in this game. But he's got 59 probes. He's got that northern base mining. Oh, he's going to lose all these DTs. Especially if the Lings, like, move past a block, which they do. Oh, man. The tail end of that, though. A nasty trade. Shadow's still up 40 supply. Most of it's in army. Shadow's not rebuilding economy. So Shadow needs to just go win the game now. And Shadow's still building Zerglings, which is 
dicey, even though they're 3-3 three, three in Adrenal Glands. I mean, actually, the Zerglings beat the Zealots so hard, it's not even funny. The Zealots only do 10 damage in attack. You guys know how we always talk about Zealots, if they have an extra attack upgrade, they two-shot Zerglings rather than three-shot them? These Zealots are four-shotting the Zerglings. I don't know if I've ever seen that. <laughs> such, an, such an upgrade disparity to the point where the Zealots are taking four attacks to kill a Zergling. <laughs> That's insane. The cannons will help there a bit. Attacking into mass cannon, probably not the play here for Shadow. Oh, Shadow. Oh, Shadow's a crazy person. Shadow's a crazy person. Shadow's going to attack into mass cannon. I mean, if they break this base, it's okay, but there are stalkers coming down. They, the Hydra damage? 3-3 three, three is pretty good. Dude, the probe line's getting slaughtered by Lings. The Hydras are moving south. Shadow needs to just finish off these probes. If you kill all the probes, maybe it's worth it. Maybe not, though. Oh, good focus. I mean, the focus fire and stutter step. Shadow, really? This is the most tryhard micro ever. It's amazing. This, I mean, to be fair, stutter step and focus fire is one of the more satisfying things in StarCraft. So as, as bizarre as it is to me as an Aussie, I'm like, I kind of make sense that some people just love focus firing things because it's so smooth and satisfying in StarCraft that they, they, they just prioritize that. Now, I still don't know about these 22 ex, 20 extra Corruptors and Vipers they built. What a bizarre mess that is. The Hydra Ling's doing great. If, if, if honestly, if Shadow just makes a great Aspire and makes Broodlords, they're going to be so good. You make like six Broodlords, this game's over. Oh, he's going to go for the PP attack though. He's going to go for the PP attack. The Zealot running in there, going down. Oh, that is so much urine. Seriously, dude. This is like inviting 400 people to your house, bunch of drunk dudes. And, and, and let's be honest, guys, drunk dudes pissing in, in your own house is the worst thing ever. Like, you you, you really realize how freaking ridiculous men are at aiming their waste products once they get, like, two beers in them. I swear, the second beer hits, and men start to think the toilet is, like, a fucking... It's a, it's a vague idea. Like, you don't need to pee in it. You just should pee in its general radius. They're, like... I don't know if they've got double vision or something, but the number of fucking people where I'm like, mate, you had like three beers at my house and now there's fucking pee flex on the wall behind the top of my toilet and on the floor around it and on the seat. Like, what are you even doing, man? And, and this is the fault of all the mums out there who keep cleaning up after them when they're growing up and never make them friggin' learn basic life skills. I blame you, mothers of this world. <laughs> I've probably done it myself in my younger years as well. I think it was only when I started cleaning toilets a lot where I really realized how friggin' savage we could be. Anyways, um, random tangents aside, 15 drones building. Oh, ultras got built. Ult that's, it's GG. Five, three, three ultras with some hydras behind it. That's GG, man. Oh, Florencio, the Elden Lord's gonna get taken out, dude. Hats off to Shadow. Shadow had some of the most sick tryhard focus fire micro. Actually killed a lot of disruptors before their shots could go off. And even though they clumped up really bad for some splash damage, they made good upgrades, they rebuilt their economy, and they focused fired units, and they kept doing things in the midst of the chaos that Florencio threw at them. Florencio going for the mass 19-minute blink. I don't think he blinked once in this game. Did you guys see a blink in this game? Let me know in the comments. I didn't notice one. He probably blinked a unit randomly at some point. But uh, yeah, the 0-0 versus 333. Hard to win that one. Impressive usage of splash damage from Florencio. But hats off to Shadow for peeing down maybe 3-4 next eye in this game, making sick upgrades, and actually taking Florencio down. Uh, definitely enjoy it, and I do look forward to reading all your comments on who wins, the one-armed guy or the one-legged guy. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next episode of the Florencio Files, and goodbye and good night.